piece of junk. Welcome to this edition of Trash Compactor. In this episode, I'm going to be best going up the Retro Collection Mandalorian. So I've got myself a Retro Collection Mandalorian, part of the Retro Collection wave. And to best go him up, I'm going to be using Culture Hustle Mirror Paint. The first thing I want to do is get the Mandalorian out of the packet. So the Retro Collection Mandalorian comes with his weapons. Uh, quite, they're quite nice sculpts. Also comes with this uh, plastic vintage style cape, which looks fine if it was from the 1970s, but uh, I'm going to be giving him a soft goods cape. As it came out after Return of the Jedi, a lot of Return of the Jedi had uh, soft goods as capes, so I don't know why they didn't add a soft goods cape. The new figures are very stiff because they, of course, they're brand new molds, but he's a great looking figure. Stands okay, just feet are level. I have had a few figures out of packets where uh, they got one leg longer than the other, which I find really frustrating, but part of the injection process. So for the painting, I'm gonna be using this brown color just to touch up some of the, uh, the beige areas on the Mandalorian and get rid of those. The paints I use are acrylic. That's just my preferred paint. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this chocolate brown. I'm going to cover over the blue on his leg and the beige parts that aren't going to be painted in the mirror paint. Nice thing about these retro figures is they do take paint really well, so they're great for customs. I've bought several of each, so I can have one on display. I do actually collect the retro cards and put them on my wall and leave the stickers on. Not officially class myself a card collector but I just like the retro figures so uh, why not and then I've got a set of figures that I'm going to keep for future spares and other projects get them while you can so there we go I've painted all the bits that I wanted to cover up that aren't going to be painted in the mirror paint and what I need to do is leave him to dry so the acrylic paint I use dries really quickly so this has had about just over an hour dried off quite well it is a matte paint I'm using uh, I tend to use matte paints uh, when I'm doing any of my uh, paint jobs because if I want them to be shiny then I'd use a satin coat afterwards to protect them using the mirror paint from Culture Hustle uh, this is not equivalent to the chrome pens you get the reason why I like this is because it dries really quickly it goes on really well uh, it's 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 30 pound a bottle but I have used mine loads and had it for a long time and I think it's completely worth it it dries really quickly you can leave it 24 hours if you want to make it touch so it doesn't rub off on your fingers or anything but it, it just dries really well and it goes on beautifully I've got a little bit of uh, IPA in my uh, plastic cup because this is an alcohol based paint you do need to use uh, a white spirit or some kind of alcohol cleaner to remove the paint from the brush and then just a case of me going around the areas of the figure really carefully because the figure the, the the paint flows really well off the brush so once you've got a little bit on there as soon as you touch it, it just starts to bleed into all those little nooks and crannies that you want to get to so you don't really need to do a great deal of painting and once it's dried you get beautiful shiny finish it's great for droids great for details on the Darth Vader or belt buckles I think the advantage for me is the speed at which this dries and the way it looks afterwards you can get better results from using some other silver based paints chrome pens are awesome look stunning but for me they just take too long to dry that's what I find frustrating with this paint job, I'm not being completely 100% accurate to the screen version. He doesn't have the little uh, mudhorn emblem on. Um, I'm not f following his armor completely 100%, but the mold isn't 100%. It doesn't matter, it's a vintage style. Vintage style is 
a nod to a simplified detail and he is a, be a beautiful figure so there we go I've uh, covered all the bits that I wanted to cover and I will leave him to dry making sure I'll give my brush a good wipe a uh, good rinse in the uh, IPA so it's been a couple of hours and he's dried off so I can touch him without getting uh, silver on my fingers I could pop his plastic cape back on but I'm not a fan of it so I'm going to be making him a soft goods cape to go on so for this I'm going to be using a piece of brown felt and I don't have a pattern or a template I'm going to do this freehand and there's an easy way to do it because I'm not putting armholes in or anything I, it's going to be a cape that goes around his neck so I've cut it to the width that I want it to be behind his body so you can see I sort of laid the figure onto the felt and just cut it to be the the width of the figure and then what I'm going to do is I've marked roughly about an, um, with my finger an inch down where I want it to be at the back of his neck I'm just going to cut down the center of the felt with my uh, scalpel this then creates a split and I can pop it at the back of his neck and double check that that is exactly where I want the back of the neck to be which it is that'll fit perfectly the next thing to do is to just fold it over I could get my scalpel and uh, lay it down and cut it but I'm just going to use a pair of scissors to trim a semicircular curve at the bottom and then cut straight up the center to create a couple of tabs so as you can see it will now go around his neck and when I pull those tabs forward we'll create a little bit of a natural curve in the top of the cape so I could use my scalpel but it's easy to get the scissors so those tabs that are at the front are far too big so I'm just going to cut at a slight angle to taper that cape down towards probably about the center just to create a smoother line and give the cape a little bit of shape making sure I do it equally on both sides a little bit too much on the side but I'll be fine So now when I put the cape on the back and I bring the tabs around, you can see they will now nicely go around the neck, create a nice shape. So what I want to do with my scissors is to cut where they're going to join. Now at this point, this is where you could sew them. If you're a sewer, you like a bit of sewing. But for speed and just for easiness I'm going to cut the two tabs at a slight angle probably just narrow that side down a little bit it's probably a bit too thick there we are just cut those off so they've got a little bit of an angle so I've got one that's slightly thicker on one side one that's slightly thinner and what I'm going to do that is just so they fold over and I'm going to use a touch of super glue now I could do this in the air or just stick a bit of glue on and pin hold them together with tweezers but what I'm going to do I've got a packaging noodle so this is something that if it does stick to the noodle it will come off quite easily and won't cause any damage to the noodle or of course to the cape so what I want to do is hold the cape around the noodle and what I'm trying to do is those two diagonals that I cut I'm going to stick them together Let me up, make sure I've got some glue at the tip of my super glue nozzle and stick a tiny tiny little bit of super glue on there hold that down 
just so it tacks off. Now because it's fabric it sticks pretty quickly. Just want to leave it, there we are, you can leave it to dry off properly. I want to do it without taking it apart, keep it together. So I'm just trying to get it off the noodle. A few fibres have stuck which is fine. going to pinch them together. It will stick a little bit to your fingers but be fine. We go. Sticking to <laughs> So that's pulled a few of the fibers. So all I want to do is just trim those little fibers off where the excess glue is. That neatens the cape off and then I can neaten that off and then leave that to dry properly. So that's had some time to dry. That will fit nicely over his head. But one thing I want to do is I want to create a little slit in the back for the gun to rest on. Now what I could do is I could cut a couple of slits into the felt and then slip the gun through those slits or what I could do is actually create a little slot for the gun to fit into. I'll just use my scissors to cut a very 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 small piece of fabric. don't want it to be too big but I want it to be just big enough to allow the gun to slide through and hold the gun at the back of the cape. Make that a little bit narrower and then sticking it onto the back of the cape at a slight angle and that will be enough to hold the weapon. So again, tiny little bit of super glue, making sure I don't get any more on my fingers. And then I can just position that in the middle of the back at a slight angle and then press it down onto the fabric and then leave that to dry. So the glue will dry and it'll look pretty invisible if you haven't put too much on, which is good. I'll just use my uh, knife to scrape off some of the fluff that I've got on my table that's sticking to the felt. So the cape's dried off now. Totally touch it without any problems. Just get rid of that little bit of red fluff and then I can pop the cape over his head. That'll sit quite nicely on the figure the right length we can have it at a slight angle so it looks like it's draping over one shoulder or it can be in the center however I wish I quite like felt uh, as a cape material and then my slip, little slit in the back for putting the weapon in works well I did realize though I have I put the weapon in the wrong way around it should be up the other way and the great thing about these retro figures is they hold their weapons beautifully, which is uh, one thing that's uh, really good. So there we go. Uh, relatively simple custom and paint job. I think the mirror paint doesn't look too much like a mirror, but it's got a good reflective surface. It looks nice. The cape hangs well. It's the right length. Weapon sits well. And I just think that super easy custom and comparing him to the original, I think they're uh, they sit well together. I also did the same with a cape for the Muff Gideon figure, getting rid of the uh, the hideous black cape, Darth Vader cape that he had on. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please subscribe, click the notifications, and look forward to seeing you again. What a piece of junk!